Hi everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. This will be a super easy toe up sock knitting pattern, super easy for beginners. So don't be afraid, even if you never knitted anything, I will show you step by step how to do it. Today I'm going to work with a special yarn and this is a handmade yarn. We are doing it ourselves and it is called Vulpedia Socks. So this yarn is vegan, but it's also great for anybody who's allergic to wool or maybe you've got someone in your family who does not like wool, who's afraid of wool because it could be itchy or scratchy and this yarn is really super, super soft. It's usually made for underwear, but we are using it today for our feet. So it's super luxury and yeah, it's just super soft, like baby skin. So this is four ply, 200 meters, and I'm going to work the size 3031. For this pattern, I'm using our sock chart. Please find the link in the video description. If you want, you can use a regular knitting set for socks, but I'm using here the Nico double pointed curved needles. They are just perfect for this project. We will work only on two needles and the third needle will be the working needle and it's just perfect for putting your work aside so the needles won't come off and they're very flexible. It's great to work with them. So you will see it's, it's just a pleasure to work. And it's also great for beginners because it's bamboo and you won't lose your stitches that fast as on metal. We're going to knit these socks toe up, so from the toe. Traditionally, a sock is worked from the cuff to the toe. The big disadvantage is that if you're working with sock yarn, it could happen that you're running out of yarn and you won't have enough yarn to finish your toe section. So if your shaft is too long, you will have to stop somewhere and you won't finish the whole sock. But working toe up is just so perfect because if you don't have enough yarn, you can stop at any point and finish your sock at that point. So you will have just a shorter shaft, but a finished sock. I will show you a provisional cast on. Don't be afraid, it's super easy. I will show you every step. I will show you how to increase, how to knit the foot length, I will show you the heel. It's a boomerang heel with German short rows. So it sounds complicated. It's super easy. I will show you every step. So this will be a clean look. The stitches will be twisted in the right direction. And if you have any problems with holes, so it, it's just exercise. You need to exercise and you will get better, but you can sew it afterwards from the inside if you want to. And I will also show you how to do the elastic cast off. You also need some stitch markers and a tapestry needle for sewing your loose ends later. For the first sock, we are going to unravel the yarn from the outside. That's why I'm putting the inner thread a little bit to the inside that it won't get in our way. And then I'm unraveling the yarn from the outside. So we're working the first sock from the outside, the second from the inside. So there are two gradients, two same gradients, and you will get two socks from this yarn ball. Start with a simple slip knot. For this, create a circle. Put the long strand under the circle and pull it through. And this will give you a loop. Just tighten this loop, not too tight, and just grab your first needle and put it through the loop and then tighten. Now take your second needle and just hold it together with your first needle. Secure the short strand. And now we are wrapping the thread around the needles and forming an eight while doing that.
There should be 10 stitches on each side after that. Make sure that your work is not too loose. When the thread is coming from this side, we're going to knit the needle on the opposite side. Take the third needle for that. Turn the needle that you're not working with into the flexible position. At that point, I'm gonna need more tension and therefore I'm wrapping the yarn around my finger. I'm knitting the next stitch through the back loop only. So insert your needle from above and grab the yarn, pull up a loop and then take off your stitch. And one more time, insert your needle through the back loop only, grab the yarn, pull up a loop and take off. So it's a little bit flimsy at the beginning, but you'll get used to it and it will be better in the next rounds. Yeah, and we are just repeating this across the row. When you're done with a knitting needle, just move it into the flexible position. Yeah, and now the other side, move the other needle into working position. Grab the working needle. Try to knit the first stitch as tight as possible. So the stitches on this needle are twisted in another direction and we're going to knit them through the front loop this time. The front loop is loose, so therefore we're stitching on the front side from the bottom. Then pull up a loop and take off. Make sure to knit this stitch very tight and the others can be normal. One more time. Stitch from the bottom, pull up a loop and take off and repeat this across the row. I'm knitting the very last stitch through the back loop only. And that's our base. Now I'm going to show you how to increase stitches. We're going to have one increasing round and one without afterwards. So we'll alternate between these two rounds. And then please have a look at the sock chart. There is also an English version and for the size 3031 we're going to need 25 stitches on each needle. When increasing we will have 26 on each side and that's completely fine. Now bring your needle into working position. Set up your tension. So from now on, we are going to knit the stockinette stitch through the front loop only. So the stitches are twisted in one direction only. So knit the first stitch, 
from the bottom, pull up a loop and take off and make sure to knit the very first stitch very tight and the second stitch will be always an increase. For this stitch through your stitch and pull up a loop but leave your work like this and then stitch a second time through the same loop but through the back loop and then pull up a loop. This way you'll have two loops on your needle. So this way we knitted one stitch on the front and on the back side. So that's a KFB increase. And now take off. So we made two stitches out of one. Continue to knit until you have two stitches left on this needle. Two stitches are left and now we're going to increase the second last stitch so the KFB as shown before. So knit through the front loop, leave it like this and knit also through the back loop. Pull up a loop and then take off. Then knit the last stitch. Now switch the needles to work on the other side. Now we're going to work on this side and we will increase also the other half of our stitches to finish the round. So first knit the first stitch very tight and then increase again, knit front and back loop. Knit all the other stitches until you have two stitches left on this needle. So you've got two stitches left and now we are increasing the second last stitch. KFB knit front and back loop of a stitch. Then knit the last stitch. So this was the increasing round. Now we've got here two more stitches and also here two more stitches. So for the next round we are going not to increase, we're just knitting over all the stitches across the round. And knit also this side without increases. And now repeat one round with increases and afterwards one round without increases. So let's do it together one more time. Just knit the first stitch 
as usual, very tight. And then increase the second stitch through the front and back loop. And then knit all the other stitches until you have two stitches left on this needle. Now increase the second last stitch, knit through the front and through the back loop at the same time take off and then knit the last stitch on this needle. So that's half of our round. Now switch the needles. And on this side the same. So knit the first stitch, then increase the second stitch. Knit all the other stitches until you have two stitches left on this needle. Now increase the second last stitch, knit through the front and back loop, and then knit the last stitch. So this was the increasing round, and now we are going to knit the next round without increases so just knit over all your stitches without increasing Continue this way and we will meet again when you have 26 stitches on each side or the number that you need for your size. And this is how it looks like. That's our toe section. And you see it's closed on its own. So don't bother about that thread. We will work it, sew it later afterwards. So that's no problem. Yeah, it's a super nice. These are the increases and this is the toe, the perfect toe section. So let's knit the foot and for this we're going to knit the stockinette stitch in rounds without increases. My chart is telling me to knit 10.5 centimeters. I would recommend to try on the sock in between. So just leave the needles in your project like this and then just try on the sock. And now we're going to knit stitches over stitches, just the knit stitch until the foot length is long enough. I would recommend to count your rounds to get the same sock for your second version. So you can use a round or row counter or you can write them down uh, in your phone or on a paper or uh, we can count them afterwards. I will show you how to do that through the stitches you can see.
So and here we are. These are our 10.5 additional centimeters. And let's count after the last increase. And in total, these are 50 rounds after the toe section. Use the Vs of your stitches to count. You can recognize the last increase on the last pearl. And if you see that, there is a V coming out. So we won't count this because it belongs to the increase, but all the Vs afterwards. Start to count from the second stitch after the increase. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. So what some knitters are doing is to insert a marker after every 10th round. So this way you can count this easily afterwards. So let's try on the sock and see if it's long enough or maybe too short. And what I would recommend if you're knitting for kids, please make them really longer. They are growing so fast. Um, and if you're not doing your sock within one day, then just uh, yeah, take the advice to knit some, maybe one centimeters or two, uh, just bigger for the foot length. So let's knit the boomerang heel together. And I would recommend to use two stitch markers for that part. Now choose one side you want to knit the heel. It doesn't matter which one of them. And we're going to knit only on one side, no longer in a round, we're going to knit in rows. We're going to use the German short rows and the pattern will stay the same. It will be the stockinette stitch. For the stockinette stitch in rows, we are going to knit the stitches on the right side and on the wrong side where you see the pearls, we are going to purl. But I will show you how to do that, of course. So let's knit all the stitches on that side. So across the row, just knit all the stitches. Now let's turn the work and we're going to knit the row on the wrong side. And this is where we're going to start with the German short rows. I'm going to show you one option where the heel will get a really beautiful turning. After turning, we're going to create always a double stitch. This helps us to create the heel. And the double stitch will be also a marker when knitting the heel. If you see the purl side, you should remember that we will do the double stitches as if to knit. And on the other side, so if you see the right side, we are going to do the double stitches as if to purl. So you can remember it like it's always re reverse. If you see the pearls, we will take off the stitch as if to knit and on the other side, the otherwise. So let's bring the yarn to the front. Now stitch from the bottom on the front side as if to knit and then just take off the stitch. So don't knit it. Insert your needle as if to knit and then take off. And then you need to tighten the stitch to create this double stitch. It is because of the tension. So if your double stitches are not tight enough, you could get holes. But if your double stitches are too tight, you may have difficulties to knit them. So uh, yeah, you've, you need a very good balance between too tight and loose. Now let's purl all the other stitches. For this, insert your needle from above on the front side, then wrap the yarn around your needle and pull up a loop 
from the bottom side. Pull up a loop and then take off. And this is your purl stitch. One more time, yarn to the front, insert your needle from above on the front side, wrap around, pull up a loop from the bottom side and then take off. Yeah, and we will do this with all the stitches in this row until you're done with your needle. So after turning, we're doing only one double stitch and then we'll knit or purl. So if you see the pearls, if you see the wrong side, we will always purl. And if you see the right side, then we will knit. So after turning, we are going to do always a double stitch. I bring the yarn to the front. And now we're going to take off the stitch as if to purl. Insert your needle from above on the front side. The yarn in front and take off the stitch and then tighten to get this double stitch. Knit all the other stitches across the row until you reach the next double stitch on the opposite side. So sometimes knitters think that this loop belongs to the double stitch, but it does not. So this is just a usual stitch and we're going to knit that. And this one is the double stitch. And we're going to stop at that point and turn our work. So we don't knit this double stitch at that point and just turn to continue. And after turning, we're going to create always a double stitch and on this side you see the wrong side, the purl side. That means we're going to take off the stitch as if to knit. So bring the yarn to the front and then insert your needle from the bottom and take off. Now tighten the stitch and we're going to purl all the other stitches in this row until you see the next double stitch. So just purl all the stitches. So we won't knit this double stitch and then turn your work. So that's the right side of our work. And this means we are going to take off this double stitch as if to purl. So I'm stitching from above on the front side and then take off and tighten your stitch to create this double stitch. And then you just knit all the other stitches until the next double stitch on the opposite side. Yeah. 
So one may think that this loop is also one of the double stitches, but it's not. It's just a regular stitch and we need that one. So now we've got two and two double stitches on the left and on the right side, so four in total. Now let's turn our work and you will repeat this procedure until you've got one third of your stitches left. So I had a total of 26 stitches on one needle and I'm going to continue until I have eight stitches left. We don't count the double stitches, only the stitches in the middle. And this is how it looks like. You've got something like a triangle. And now I'm going to mark my eight stitches in the middle. So just set some stitch markers in there. Slide the second one just onto the needle. Now we're going to knit two rounds over all needles. So two full rounds. And afterwards we're going to knit the double stitches backwards. So the double stitches at the green marker we will knit them through the back loop so they are twisted in the other direction. So these double stitches have to be knitted through the back loop. Knit all the double stitches on this side. So we are knitting in the round and we won't turn. Just knit them all and make sure to take all the loops. Don't forget any single threads or whatever make sure to knit through the full double stitch. And on this side, on this needle, knit also all the stitches. And if you knit the first stitch, then make sure to knit it very tight to avoid holes. So now we can see our double stitches on the purple side, so at the purple marker. And they are twisted in the normal direction, so we can knit them through the front loop as usual. But uh, also here, make sure to catch all the threads and all the loops. So here's a perfect example if you're knitting the double stitches too tight. You've got trouble getting into those stitches. So that's perfect to avoid holes, but as you can see, uh, it's sometimes hard to go through, but it works. So yeah, you just need a very good balance between tension and loosen up. You just have to exercise. It's just, yeah, you will get better by doing it. <laughs>
then move the marker from one needle to another. And then just knit a second round, only knit stitches all over and use both knitting needles for that. move the purple marker to another needle and knit the stitches in the middle between the two markers. Take off the green marker, we don't need that one any longer. And then knit one more stitch on that side and turn your work. So we're going to work the double stitches backwards this will be the second shaping for the heel. Now you can see the pearl side, so the wrong side. And in this case, we are going to take off the stitch as if to knit on the front side, stitch from the bottom and then take off. Purl all the other stitches until the next marker. You can also take off that marker as we don't need it any longer. Purl one more stitch and then turn your work. To create the next double stitch, take off the stitch as if to purl. Now knit all the stitches until the next double stitch. Knit this double stitch through the back loop. Knit one more stitch. And then turn your work. And on the purl side, we are going to take off this stitch as if to knit. And then tighten to create the double stitch. Purl all the other stitches until the next double stitch. Purl this double stitch through the front loop on the front side. Then purl one more stitch and turn your work. On the right side, take off the first stitch as if to purl to create a double stitch and tighten. And then knit all the other stitches until the next double stitch. So let's knit this double stitch through the back loop, then knit one more stitch and turn your work. Now repeat this procedure until you reach the original position of your needles and until you worked out all the double stitches from inside to the outside. And at this point I've got one double stitch on each side. And at this point, I'm going to finish my heel and we're going to knit over all the stitches from now on without increasing and without double stitches. 
So just knit all over and use all your needles for working in around now. For the shaft continue to knit in rounds the same way as we did for the foot length. Please leave enough yarn for the cuff section and bind off or cast off. Let's just have a look at our heel and this is how it looks like, how it turned out. So very nice, a nice shaping of the heel. And on this side, you can see it was quite too tight, but it also worked out. So, and that's our shaft. This is how it looks like so far. And I stopped at the last color change, so there won't be any knots. So let's knit the cuff. This will be a very easy, but a beautiful ribbing pattern. And the repeat will be all the time, knit three stitches and purl one stitch. And then again, knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one, and so on. For the following rounds, if you see the V's, that means that we have to knit. And if you see a purl, that means that we will purl the stitch. So in the following rounds, you don't have to count your stitches, you just knit them as they appear. And this is our ribbing pattern cuff. So very nice look elastic and this is how it looks like from the inside actually a very nice look so you could use it also for other garments or yeah just many maybe shawls <laughs> so now you can see the pearl in our yarn and this pearl if you reach it we didn't yet but if you reach it it tells you that you shouldn't use any more yarn for the first sock otherwise you won't have enough for the second so it actually marks the exact middle of your yarn length so these are 14 rounds in total and now let's cast off so let's do the elastic cast off. A usual cast off is not very suitable for a toe up sock. It's mostly too tight. 
Now first knit two stitches as they appear. If you see the V's then knit two stitches. Then put both needle back onto the previous needle. Leave it as it is and then yarn over and knit these two stitches again but now through the back loop. So you knit them twice, first as they appear and then together through the back loop. And this will give you the elastic cast off. So now we've got already one stitch on our needle. That means we have to knit only one more. And then you slide back these both stitches again and leave the needle as it is. And then you knit these two stitches through the back loop. Make sure to have a loose tension. Otherwise your cuff would get too tight. And it's also easier for knitting if your tension is quite loose. So now the next stitch is a purl stitch. You see this purl. That means we've got to purl this stitch and then you slide both stitches back onto the previous needle and then you leave it as it is and you knit these two stitches together through the back loop. And then just repeat this procedure until you're done with this round. This is how our sock looks like so far. So there is one loop left. So I just enlarged the loop. And now let's cut the yarn. Leave a longer tail for sewing. Now pull the thread out of your loop. Then thread your yarn through the tapestry needle or your wool needle for sewing, whatever you have at home. Now we're going to join this to have a seamless end so you won't see the beginning or the ending of this work. Now we're searching for the very first stitch and we will need both loops. So you, we will have to stitch under the V, the front and the back loop. So you're doing it from behind, just stitch under these both loops and pull the yarn. And then stitch back from where you came 
and also to the inside of your sock and then pull the yarn and it will be a endless cast off so you're creating a new stitch uh, it looks like a knitted stitch so make sure that your tension is very loose and then we'll create a knot on the inside and I'm going under one stitch and then I'm going to create a loop And then we're stitching twice through the loop to create the knot. So let's take a look if this looks nice. Yeah, that's okay. So now let's sew all the loose ends. And I will show you how to do that and you can do it this way with all your loose ends in your sock. Et voila, our sock is done. Yay, that was a great job. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you liked it, just leave me a thumbs up or maybe comment or if you have a question, whatever. I'm very happy to do more tutorials like this. Also a big thank you to our channel members for your support. And yeah, so happy knitting, have a good time. And until next time, bye bye.